Number 7. The Surface Web This is the part of the internet you already know, and it only makes up about 4-5% to of the whole thing. It's the tip of the iceberg that floats safely above the waterline. Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, Facebook, Wikipedia, bright, colorful, and designed to keep you clicking. It's the surface level buffet, full of cat videos, shopping carts, and clickbait headlines that convince you to watch top 10 weirdest animals you won't believe exist. But here's the unsettling part. For as massive as it feels, the surface web is basically nothing compared to what lies beneath. Search engines like Google only index sites that allow them to, which means every time you think you're Googling everything, you're really only Googling a thin layer carefully served to you. Imagine standing on the beach, scooping a handful of water and declaring you've seen the whole ocean. That's what using the surface web is like. Most people spend their entire online lives here without realizing it. They log in, scroll endlessly, buy a few things they don't need, and never question what's below, which to be fair, might be the safer option, because the deeper you go, the less stable things get. Information is harder to trust, laws become blurrier, and anonymity opens doors people usually keep locked. The scariest thing about the surface web isn't what's on it, it's what isn't. All the content you'll never see unless you go looking in the wrong places. And the surface web makes sure you never notice. It's built to distract you, to keep you entertained, so you don't ask what's under the waves, which is a clever strategy really. After all, why worry about the unseen when you can spend six hours watching raccoon TikToks? Number six, the Burgey web. Just below the surface lies the messy, dimly lit basement of the internet. Technically, it's still part of the surface web. You don't need Tor or special tools to reach it, but this is where things already start to rot. Here you'll find piracy sites with movie rips and cracked games, shady forums trading malware, early 4chan archives full of the worst jokes you've ever seen, and places where you're one wrong click away from giving your computer the digital equivalent of a terminal illness. It's not hidden, but it isn't exactly safe either. Think of it as the convenience store parking lot at 3 a.m. Still public, but you already know you shouldn't be here. And yet millions of people venture here every day, not because they want to live dangerously, but because it's where forbidden candy is sold. Free versions of expensive software, shows still in theaters, cheat engines for games, and that little, what's the harm curiosity, is what makes it unsettling. The Bergy web lures people in with something useful, then punishes them with viruses, scams, or occasionally, FBI agents with too much free time. The scary part isn't just the content. It's how unstable it all is. Pages vanish overnight. Links redirect to something worse. And unlike Netflix or Wikipedia, there's no safety net. You're on your own. Which means one lazy click can turn your laptop into a very expensive paperweight. If the surface web is the polished storefront, this is the alley behind it. Overflowing dumpsters, flickering lights, and graffiti on the walls that says click here for free Wi-Fi. Spoiler, don't click it. Number 5. The Deep Web. Now we go deeper, and here's the twist. Despite the scary name, the deep web is not illegal, not hidden in shadows, and not filled with hackers waiting to jump out at you. In fact, it's where most of the real internet exists. Around 90 to 95% of the web is deep web. So what is it? It's simply everything that search engines don't index. That includes your email inbox, online banking, medical records, private databases, and paid access content like academic journals or company intranets. If you've ever logged into Netflix, you've technically used the deep web. The reason Google can't index it is because it sits behind passwords, paywalls, or forms. And here's the unsettling part. It means the majority of human digital activity exists in a place you can't Google your way into. Financial markets, government databases, sensitive corporate files, classified archives, all sitting beneath the surface. Every hospital MRI, every military logistics file, every school record, all technically reachable, but hidden by design. The danger isn't that the deep web is evil. It's that if someone finds a way inside, the consequences are devastating. A single breach in this layer can expose millions of credit cards, confidential identities, or government secrets. It's where the stakes shift from your computer is broken to your life has been stolen. In other words, this is the vault floor of the internet. Massive, unseen, and holding everything valuable you've ever put online. Safe, until it isn't. Number four, the dark web. This is where the iceberg truly dips into black water. Unlike the deep web, which is mostly boring login pages, the dark web is intentionally hidden. You need special software like Tor to reach it. And even then, navigation is clumsy and unstable. Here, anonymity is the currency. You'll find black markets for drugs, weapons, counterfeit passports, and stolen data. Hitmen for hire ads appear next to forums on hacking tutorials. 
Whispered chat rooms discuss things you can't unsee. It's unsettling because it's lawless, but also because it's a mixture of the worst and the noblest human behaviors. For every illegal weapons bazaar, there's also a whistleblower safe house. For every scam market, there's a secure communication hub for activists in oppressive regimes. The dark web is small compared to the deep web, but its reputation casts a massive shadow. The scariest part isn't just what's for sale, it's how ordinary it looks. Listings read like eBay, except instead of secondhand shoes, it's kilograms of heroin. Instead of Amazon delivery times, it's encrypted shipping routes. But don't mistake accessibility for safety. The dark web is crawling with honeypots, fake markets run by law enforcement, baiting would-be criminals into making mistakes. Others are outright scams, vanishing with your cryptocurrency before you know what happened. If the surface web is Disneyland and the Bergy web is a back alley, the dark web is stepping into an underground fight club where half the fighters aren't real and the other half want your kidneys. Number three, Mariana's web. Here's where fact begins dissolving into myth. Mariana's web is an alleged level of the internet that makes the dark web look like child's play. Unlike Tor, which anyone can install, this layer is said to require quantum computers to access. The encryption is supposedly so advanced that no regular machine can even scratch it. What's inside? No one knows. The theories range from secret government archives, advanced AI research projects, hidden military communications, and encrypted data black holes holding the real secrets of the world. Some even say it's where artificial intelligences run unsupervised, building simulations we can't distinguish from reality. Of course, the truth is murky. Most experts believe Mariana's web is an urban legend, a digital boogeyman designed to scare people away from looking too deep. But the fact that so many believe in it reveals something terrifying, that we all suspect there are layers of knowledge deliberately hidden from us, forever out of reach. And even if it doesn't exist, the concept itself is scary enough. Because what's more unsettling than a shadow world of information so advanced you'd need a quantum machine just to peek inside? Number 2. The Primarch System Now we step fully into paranoia. The Primarch System is another whispered legend, often lumped in with Mariana's web, but even darker. According to the myth, it's not just a hidden archive. It's a control system, an ancient backbone of the internet, older than the public web, built with unbreakable encryption. Stories say it isn't just unhackable, it's untouchable. Supposedly, the Primark system routes traffic, filters information, and decides what gets through. Some describe it as a living intelligence, quietly steering the flow of the internet from beneath the surface. Others call it a government failsafe, an invisible skeleton key that no one outside certain agencies can even confirm exists. No one has evidence, but the idea itself is horrifying. Imagine using the internet your whole life only to learn that everything, every click, every transfer, every login was quietly overseen by something you never knew was there. Something that never breaks, never reveals itself, and never answers questions. If Mariana's web is a legend of what we can't access, the Primark system is the legend of what controls us without our consent. And sometimes, fear doesn't need proof to work, it just needs possibility. Number 1. The Unknown Depths The final layer is the one no one can map. What lies beyond the dark web, beyond alleged quantum networks and mythical systems? No one knows, and that no one knows is exactly the point. Maybe there's nothing, just empty bandwidth, like cosmic voids in space. Maybe there are classified military testbeds running simulations we'll never discover. Maybe there are entire secret societies communicating through protocols we can't even detect. Or maybe the idea of these hidden depths is itself the danger, because it makes us realize how little of the internet we actually understand. The iceberg metaphor works because it's honest. We only see the surface and we can't truly measure what's below. For all our technology, most of the internet remains invisible to us. And that means the scariest part isn't necessarily hackers or hitmen or government secrets. It's the possibility that the deepest layers aren't designed for us at all. The iceberg of the internet reminds us that what we see, social feeds, memes, shopping carts, is just the surface. Beneath it lies unstable piracy hubs, hidden databases, anonymous black markets, and whispered legends of layers we may never access. Maybe Mariana's web and the Primark system are nothing more than digital ghost stories. Or maybe they're real, humming quietly in the background, shaping the internet without us ever knowing. That's the frightening part, not what we can prove exists, but what might exist just out of reach. In the end, the scariest thing about the internet isn't its monsters or markets. It's the fact that most of it remains invisible, waiting in the dark while the rest of us scroll past cat videos, completely unaware.